News of the massacre spread during the morning after an attack overnight on the outskirts of Ochaya town in Beni territory, the epicenter of the years-long rampage by Islamic State-affiliated allied democratic forces in North Kivu province. In the morning, information spread of a new killing with at least 26 dead in the territory of Beni in the North Kivu province, the epicenter of the abuses of the ADF rebels. Originally, largely Muslim Ugandan rebels, the ADF, have been active since the mid-1990s in the region of the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, where they have killed thousands of civilians. In 2019, they pledged allegiance to the jihadist group Islamic State, which now claims some of their actions and presents them as its Central African province. Very recently, on Ugandan territory, they were accused of killing three people, including two foreign tourists on October 17th in Queen Elizabeth National Park, action claimed the next day by Islamic State. Monday evening and until dawn on Tuesday, attackers presented by the authorities as ADF militia attacked a peripheral district of the city of Ochia, looting and killing mainly with knives. Angry demonstrators set fire to humanitarian vehicles which were preparing to distribute food. They said, we don't need humanitarian aid, we want security declared one demonstrator. At the other end of the province, the fighting which had intensified since the beginning of October between the M23 rebels and pro-government armed groups approached around 20 kilometers north of Goma, a town of more than 1 million inhabitants bordered by Lake Kivu and backed by the Rwandan border. There has been fighting in Kibumba since this morning, a security source who requested anonymity said. The rebels are confronting the Wazalendo, name given to the armed groups known as Patriots. The M23 has just fired two bombs at us and we are in the process of responding, added this source. Officially, the army is respecting a ceasefire demanded by the regional mediation, but witnesses say that soldiers and patriots are fighting together against M23, a rebellion supported by Rwanda, according to numerous sources. In the afternoon, the military government the military governor's spokesperson accused rebels supported by the Rwandan army of having attacked an army position. Faced with this provocation, all measures have been taken, he said in a statement. According to another security source and a civilian witness, the army used a Sukhoi 25 fighter jet against the rebels. The situation is getting worse and worse. Both sides are exchanging heavy weapons fire, said a resident. We are forced to flee. In a situation update, the United Nations Humanitarian Coordination in the DRC estimated on Monday at least nearly 200,000 of number of people who have had to flee their homes since October 1st in the territories of Luchuru and Masisi. The fighting which also affects the territory of Nilangongo closer to the provincial capital has also caused several dozen deaths, both civilians and combatants in recent weeks. Government spokesperson Patrick Muyaya spoke on Monday of an active incursion by the Rwandan army last week and around 50 civilians killed by the rebels. An M23 spokesperson strongly denies this. The M23 is a predominantly Tutsi rebellion which took up arms again at the end of 2021 and seized a large swath of territory in North Kivu. 
an East African force is deployed in the province, but like that of the UN, finds itself heavily criticized by Kinshasa, which accuses it of not forcing the rebels to lay down their arms. In Malawi, the country's graft Boston body, the Anti-Corruption Bureau, or ACB, says political interference has been among the, ma the major elements that have stifled efforts to fight financial malfeasance and mismanagement. The agency's director, Martha Chizuma, says that this at a televised media briefing on Wednesday as the ACB commemorates 25 years of operation. Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre. In Malawi, the Anti-Corruption Bureau started its operations in 1998 as an independent and autonomous government body with the core function of investigating corruption in public and private institutions. Martha Chizuma is the Director General of the Anti-Corruption Bureau in Malawi. In the past 25 years, the SEB has registered and processed a total of 36,878 complaints. Out of these complaints, 10,615, representing 29%, were recommended for investigations, whereas 26,210, representing 71%, were closed or referred to other institutions. She said many of the complaints were closed because of lack of evidence. Chizuma said political interference is among the major elements that have long stifled efforts to fight corruption. Political interference is not only in Malawi, it's probably across the globe in as far as anti-corruption fight is concerned. But I always say it's how you handle that political interference, where you, you will stand on the statutes and for us the SCB is supposed to be independent, whether you will be able to overcome the political interference and still stand. She, however, said the Bureau has recently made efforts to stand against the problem. If there was ever a time when we have really tried to depoliticize anti-corruption fight, it could be the recent years, starting from 2021. Because the philosophy that we decided to adopt was to deal with the current corruption swiftly and severely without considering which political party. She cited as an example the arrest of Malawi Vice President Saul Shirima last year for allegedly receiving kickbacks from the British businessman Zoneth Satam in return for awarding Malawi government contracts. Chizuma also cited the arrest of a bodyguard of former President Peter Mutalika in 2020 for allegedly helping Mutalika avoid nearly $7 million in import duties. Malawi President Lazarus Chakwera has long said that his administration will never interfere in the fight against corruption. George P. is a former lecturer of political science at the University of Livingstonia in northern Malawi. He says there is nothing for Malawians to celebrate because there are a lot of corruption cases involving high-profile politicians which the ACB has failed to conclude. They have failed to investigate conclusively the cases. For example, the case of uh, former President Bakiri Mluzi, which uh, was thrown out by court. Secondly, we had a case of uh, Cashgate during the Joyce Banda administration. That case has not been concluded up to now. The ACB arrested Mluzi in 2009 on the accusation of diverting an $11 million donation to his personal bank account when he was serving as a president between 1994 and 2004. But the High Court freed him in May of this year, citing a lack of interest from prosecutors to conclude the case. However, Chizuma said delays in concluding the cases cannot be blamed on the ACB alone. She said some factors would include adjournments by the courts, a lack of resources, and the need for more investigations on the matter at hand.